Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row, and tonight I'm excited to bring you this video. Tonight we're going to be talking about toasted bourbons. Now there's one special bottle of toasted bourbon that I got in the last store hall. I have not opened it up yet. I'm really excited to open it up. So we're going to open that up tonight, and that is the Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Sour Mash, and I'm so, so excited for this one. This is one that I've wanted for a very, very long time. Now what are we going to pair it up against? Well, we're going to pair it up against a Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Bourbon and an Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Now, many of you are going, that's not a fair comparison, and it's not, and it's not meant to be. What we're trying to do is, one, is I want to figure out between these two, which is my favorite, right? Like, I like the Sour Mash, the plain Sour Mash, and I like the Michter's Bourbon. I prefer the Sour Mash just a little bit more. How, and However, in the, in the toasted world, I don't know yet because I've never had this one, so I'm excited to pop this one, try it. But what I'm really trying to find out by putting this one in here, this one is not easy to find, but it's when you do, it's not particularly expensive. It's not particularly hard to find. It, 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 trust me, I know it's hard to find any good bourbons now in this world, in Virginia, wherever you are in the United States. It's hard to find good bourbon. Everything's allocated and everybody's hunting. Totally understand. But this is kind of achievable. It's kind of findable. These, these are ridiculous. I totally understand that. So what I'm trying to do is figure out if this bottle, which is kind of achievable, kind of findable, how does it compare to these truly, truly special bottles? Now we're going to pour them up. This isn't a blind. I understand that I'm going to probably think these two are better than this one. And between these two, I don't really have a preference, so I'm not worried about blinding it, but I really want to see how this compares against these. So let's pour them up and see what we can find out. This is the Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Sour Mash Whiskey. And the reason it's not bourbon is because grain or corn is not the primary grain in it. Instead, it's a close to being a bourbon. It's they rumor is it's 45-45. So 45% corn, 45% rye. But the truth is they don't release the information. But this comes in at 86 proof. And this is the one that I haven't had before. Then this one coming in at 90 proof is the Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Bourbon which I have had, and it's quite good. It's And by quite good, I mean it's exceptional. It's fantastic. And then this one is the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel coming in at 94 proof. And this is one that, again, I've had a couple bottles of this one. This one is somewhat findable. These I will probably never be able to replace. And if you have them in your collection, you are a lucky person. All right, now before I taste the exceptional stuff, let me taste the uh, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. We're going to start with that one. I'm getting a nice toasty caramel, little bit of burnt marshmallow, Smells really, really nice. This is a great bourbon. This straight up is a good bourbon. On the nose, you get a little, kind of a little bit of a baking spice and some pepper, and then just lots of caramel. It's kind of thin on the caramel, but it's it's really sweet. It's a nice, good, sweet. There's a little bit of an oak, a little toasted marshmallow, and that's about it. It's not super complex. They didn't overthink this one. And for $50, it's a great bourbon. Now let's try some of the other ones. Next up, we're gonna try the toasted barrel finish bourbon from Michter's. The nose on this one, I'm getting a lot of caramel. I'm getting a nice, nice medium banana, not overly ripe, not overly green, right in the middle. Some nice banana, some caramel, a little bit of oak, little toasty notes on the uh, toasted marshmallow, very faint, but just really, really rich on that caramel and toasted note. Just really, really nice on the nose. Now on the palate, I'm getting a little bit of dried fruit, just gobs and gobs of sweet caramel, really, really nice mouthfeel, very, very thick, viscousy mouthfeel, very long finish, kind of a little bit of a drying thing going on in my mouth, but it just keeps watering from, from that sweet, sweet caramels, lots of vanillas, a little bit of toasted oak, ever so faint little bit of spiciness as well. This is a, this is a fantastic bourbon, and the biggest difference, this tastes better than this, it's not dramatic, but where it really differentiates itself from the Elijah Craig is how thick and long lasting the experience is. This is just thinner and it's a higher proof, but this just goes on for days. It's super thick, super viscous, great mouthfeel. Just a better, it's a better bourbon experience. And, and that's why, you know, this one is $50 and somewhat hard to find. And this is $80 you know, whatever on the, uh, on the MSRP. 
and on the secondary it is ridiculous. Now the nose on this one is like a banana split. It's cream, it's, it's like chocolate sauce, it's caramel sauce, it's vanilla ice cream. That smells, that sm this smells amazing. This is great, and, and obviously some banana. This, this, is, this is delicious on the nose. It's gonna be delicious in the mouth too, I hope. On the palate, it's definitely got a little bit more rice spice, a little more baking spices up front. It's a, it's a little less sweet than this one. Has that same just absolutely thick, viscous mouthfeel. You can taste that higher rye content, and it makes for a very interesting, like, you know, toasted barrel experience because it does have a lot more character. In some ways, it reminds me of like a Wild Turkey 1 where the wild turkey has a little bit higher rye content than, uh, than most bourbons. Now, obviously, I cork pop this. And some of these toasted barrels generally get sweeter once they've been open for a week or two. But this is fantastic as it is. But I think it's going to sweeten up. This is sweeter now than it was when I first got it. When I first got it, it was really oaky. You know, you got the banana and the oak and some spice and all that stuff. But now it's just absolutely melt in your mouth, like marshmallow and caramel and, and really, really just exceptionally good and this has some of those same characteristics obviously the, the rye notes are tuned up a little bit vaguely reminds me of a sagamore spirit double oaked obviously that's much higher rye content and very different experience and very different but in some ways it just kind of kind of reminds me of, of that a little bit it reminds me of a wild turkey one i'd be interested in seeing what the wild turkey one would do up against uh up against this one that's fantastic though now let's see if we can detect some differences between these two Yeah, this one's much more caramel sweet. This is better balanced overall right now. I mean, obviously, once this is open, it sweetens up a little bit more. It, it might be neck and neck. That's just butter caramel sweet all the way down. It's got a little bit of spice, but not like this one. This one definitely has more rice spice. This one, Jamie would like more. And this one, I currently right now like a little bit more just because it's a little more full experience that's not to say that once this sweetens up over the next week or two that it won't that it won't change this may this may end up turning into this just another version of this one now that we've had those two let's let's try the elijah craig again you get a little bit of that those some of those similar elijah craig notes that you get on all elijah craigs but it's got a really kind of a nice caramel sweetness the biggest thing is that the mouth feel is much much thinner on the elijah craig flavor wise it's not drastically different. The finish obviously is shorter as well, but it's not crazily different. I'm surprised. I would have thought the difference would have been a lot bigger. And then let's talk about value. Both of these bottles are right around 80, 90 bucks or whatever retail, but you'll never see them for that price. And on the secondary, these run for, you know, three, $400 regularly. That would not be an uncommon price to see for both of these bottles. Now this bottle retails for right around $50. And on the secondary, you'll regularly see it for maybe 70. Wouldn't be a, a terrible price to get for this bottle. So if we talk about retail, these two at $80 versus this at $50, these are much, much better values, right? But when we talk about the secondary prices, we're talking $80 versus say 350. So the question is, would I rather have one of these or like four of these? That's a tough question. Now, if I'd never had any of these, I would probably want to get one of these before I got four of these. Um, because I'm a Michter's guy, right? Like I love Michter's. Michter's is one of my absolute favorite distilleries. I love what they do. And I'm very biased that way. And I totally own it. Totally own it. Now that I've had these once, could I say that I would rather have, you know, three or four or five of these over one of these? That's hard to say. I mean, obviously, from an economic standpoint, these are not four or five times better than this. At best, they're maybe 75% better. I mean, if that. And so you're talking about a distinction in price with the value that's just not there. It really isn't. The justification to go to $400 on these, it's not there. These are really good bourbons. These are fantastic toasted barrel expressions of, of Michter's. But this is a pretty darn good expression of an Elijah Craig toasted product as well. So uh, it, if you are inclined and you want to spend $400, it's your money, go for it. If not, get an Elijah Craig toasted, drink it down, enjoy it. And just think as you're sipping on it, just think, ah, if the finish were just a little bit longer, it would be just like a Michter's. And, and that actually is not too far from the truth. 
Uh, that being said, these are exceptional. I love them. I'm so grateful for Michter's who gave me this one. Thank you, Kyle. And I'm grateful for some trades from, from some of you wonderful people out there in the YouTube universe who helped me get this bottle. So thank you for that. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you ended up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Subscribe to Jamie's channel if you haven't. It's uh, it's in the description down below. Uh, I'm on there almost every video. So if you are looking for another Whiskey Row video and there's not a new one, check her channel because she probably has one because she uploads as much as I do. So anyway, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much to the Patreons. Until next time, find a bottle you love.